Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us enjoy our time going back on time. Today our topic as you see is about the house of Allah. You know the house of Allah is unique, very unique. Muslims they have millions of videos and articles about how unique the house of Allah As an example, if you go on YouTube, you will see Muslim making videos that birds don't do poo-poo on the Kaaba. Oof, 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 oof. Man, they don't. Airplanes cannot fly in the top of the Kaaba. Oof, 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 oof. Satellites. Nobody. It's the house of Allah. Can you explain to me why birds cannot do poo poo on the Kaaba? Hmm. Hey, honestly, I cannot. It's hard, in fact, to explain such a miracle. But if you go to the Kaaba, it takes you two seconds only to see, especially if you go to the third floor or second floor, to see that the Kaaba is covered by poop of birds. Hmm. So maybe the Muslims who took this picture of the birds pooping on the Kaaba, they paid those birds in that day when they took the picture so those birds can go and do poo poo on the Kaaba. Otherwise, the brothers and sisters, there is no way. No way. The Muhammadan, they do not even need to clean the roof of the Kaaba because of the poop. -poo. No. They use a vacuum machine to take the poop, uh, <coughs> not the poop, sorry, uh, <coughs> the feather, the feather. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the feather. Uh huh. Uh, you know, and, uh, and the clothes of the Kaaba is always cleaned by Allah himself. Like Allah, he sent angels. They have a vacuum machine. You will see them in the roof, wearing white clothes, have a black beard, have a vacuum machine. And I can even read the name. It says Hover. All right? And the clothes of the Kaaba is so clean, which is the skirt of the Kaaba. Look at this, you know. Look how clean it is. You know, the poop is dripping all over the place. And then we need to put the skirt in the top of the Kaaba so we can cover the Kaaba and, you know, But sometime things happen for a reason and good reason. So for me, I don't see this as a bad sign. I think that the birds are fertilizing the Kaaba. You know, if you have a plant in your yard, if you have a tree, and you know how much you like your trees, you will hope that all the birds in the world, they will do poop around your tree. And the Kaaba is no different. It receives its fertilizer. Now, let us go and see what the topic today about. You know, first time I saw an image of the Kaaba, old image, not extremely old. I mean, this is after we have cameras, <clears throat> and you know, the Arab they have cameras long after anyone else because you know until it come there, uh, it took time. That's everything. Like you know, we, we are the last to get a bicycle. And actually, first time a bicycle came to Saudi Arabia, 
the one who brought it, he got arrested and they executed the bicycle and they accused the bicycle to be the bike of the devil. I mean, there's a huge difference between Saudi Arabia a hundred years ago and Saudi Arabia today. But this is the Kaaba, not long time ago, before the oil. Dirt, nothing. Look at this. A house in any village anywhere in the world is better than this. And then you might ask yourself, why the door is so high compared to the ground? That can be explained very easy. Because the Kaaba protected by Allah to the point it is flooded by the poopoo. Each time, little, and this is not long time ago, you know. As you see now, they have a big building around it. It's not like now, you know, the, the, the previous picture. So they, they, uh, they left up the door and they left up the floor. So, you know, the poopoo -poo all over. But still, as you see, the Kaaba is covered by the poopoo. -poo. In case you do not know what the flood does, you know, this is not just a flood. Uh, in Mecca, there is no sewage. So they have what it's called, uh, in Arabic, we call it bayara. Like in America, they call it septic tank. But it's different from septic tank because there's no control of this thing, you know. The second you have a... a uh, overflow all the poopoo will go all over the place and if you have rain and you have a flood all the poopoo will fly like cake in the top of it I don't want you to imagine that this uh, especially if you are drinking coffee in the morning but this is the house of Allah <clears throat> and the Muslim they speak about how amazing the house of Allah like it's located in the center of the earth yeah because the earth is a flat you know there's a dot in the middle of the earth and the Kaaba is there mm -hmm. They have endless numbers of videos about how amazing, and even there is a video of an Egyptian. He went to the, uh, no, he did not go, sorry, to the moon. He said when Armstrong, he went to the moon, right when he was in the moon, he heard Allahu Akbar. He heard what? Allahu Akbar. And not only that, he saw an X-ray coming from the Kaaba, going all the way to the house of Allah. And then the American at that time, those evil American, they published this news in their internet for 17 days. I think he said 17 or 21, I'm not sure. You can check it out. But when the American they notice that this is, will be a big news for the Muslim world, that there is an X-ray connected between the Kaaba and the seven galaxy where Allah House is, they said, we cannot keep this in the internet, which does not exist at that time. Because the internet at that time, it was not public domain, it was only for the army and had nothing to do. You cannot post pictures even there. So there was no internet, but anyway, the American, they published it in the internet and people, they start seeing it. And then they decide, the American, they decide to take it off the pictures so nobody can see the X-ray, which Armstrong, he saw. And even the Muslim, they start making videos about Armstrong, he converted to Islam. And there's a brother of us, actually, he's an ex-Muslim, he called Armstrong and he asked him if it's true. And he said, this is absolutely false. He never associated a thing, and he did not convert to Islam. But if this is the house of Allah, forget about everything. Forget about how, you know, how bad the look of the house before the oil, before the marble, before the air conditioning, before the real money. I'm not going to judge the Kaaba by this, no. But I can judge the Kaaba by this. Why Allah chose or chosen the wrong location? My Skype is open, by the way, if you are a Mohammedan. 
Yeah, and before I forget, uh, there was a Muslim here in the chat. I saw him. He says, Ali Dawa is life on air. Go talk to him. I said to myself, he's life on air. Let me go and see, really? You know, maybe uh, I can go live, change the time, and go and call him. So I went to Ali Dawa uh, page. And I did not find him on air, but I found a recording, which was not long time ago, actually. Uh, and I found the, the I did not find Ali Dawa there. I found he have two kids like him in his channel. And here it says a question and answers Ali Dawa. Questions and answer. Mm. And then when they are live, you know, uh, I, I, as I said, I, I did not join them when they are live. This is, was, I don't know, five hours ago. The one who posed the comment, it was just uh, like 20 minutes ago. Uh, question and answer. So a person, he called them asking a question. Even after the prayer, you can do the, uh, the, 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 the sujood, uh, sahu, uh, the, the sujood of forgetfulness. Hmm. You can go and perform it and then and there, even after you've completed. All kind of questions, which is silly and useless, they have time to answer it. But then there's a guy after, he asked a question. What happened? Yeah, subhanallah, la ilaha la la three times. Yeah, so you, yeah. So he was talking about Muhammad. He he did miss uh, uh, how many times to bow down. Have you ever heard of a prophet himself who did not know how to pray? So a Muslim told him, prophet, hey, hey, you miss it. He said, okay, next time, uh, remind me, okay? Oh, Allah cannot remind him. Anyway. So you go on sujood and then, and then, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, and that, and that, that uh -huh. should be sufficient. Just Remember, they have all the time to answer those silly questions. Brother, I was praying and I missed the prayer. I prayed only and they, I made the only, uh, etc. Can I uh, re-pray again and uh, get the reward, the brother? The brother, yes, sure. And he started explaining to him. Now he will have a question, different kind of question. Is, that well, one actually, question. is it one sujood or two? I usually do two. So is it one or two? I yes, really two. thought about it. No, it's two. It's, it's two. It's two. It's two. It's two. Alhamdulillah, I've been doing it correctly. Ah, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Jazakumullah yes. <laughs> khairan. Thank you very much. Yeah. Wayak, mm. wayak. Uh huh. Yeah. Hi, brother Tarun. How you doing? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from the Bronx, man. Yeah, Bronx. Yeah. Straight from New York. I want to ask a black guy. What do you think of Muhammad only black slaves? Is that is uh, what is it? Do you want do you want like an honest answer or do you of course. Do... Well, give me a lie? What, what do you mean honest answer? Because there was listen, do you want an honest answer? It, it just people, hold on. Do you want an honest answer or lying answer? Muslim, because they have options. Do you want an honest answer? So the guy he called them. They are the, the, the program name is what? Questions and answer with Ali Dawa. Okay. So he asked him why Muhammad he have black slaves. That's a good question. Why he have a black slaves? <laughs> yeah. Hi, brother Tarun. How you doing? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from the Bronx, man. Yeah, Bronx. Yeah. Straight from New York. I want to ask a black guy, what do you think of Muhammad only black slaves? Is that is uh, what is it? Do you want do you want like an honest answer or do you of course. Do you... Well, give me a lie? What, what do you mean honest answer? <laughs> because there was did you come off? <laughs> they did not come off. Yeah, no, but you know, you know what, my brother, I think um we can do this another day because today we're trying to raise some funds. Mm. You're on TV now, man. I know. Do I know, it now. I know. A second ago, he was asking a, a guy. He was asking about how many times he should pray if he miss. He have time for that. Now suddenly they are trying to raise fund. Suddenly, and do you want honest answer or shish kebab answer? And the guy said to him, "Man, I want the answer, man. What's wrong with you, man?" Give me an answer. No. I think um, 
we can do this another day because today we're trying to raise some funds. You're on TV now, man. I know. Do I know, it now. I know. I know. Um, you can find us on YouTube. We we've answered those questions before. Thank I'm, you what? Before. Huh? I'm asking you now. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, brother, uh, this is not the the arena to do this. We have like places where we do this. Uh -huh. I'm asking understand. you. I know, but like, it's taking time from other people who you know. Have yeah, it. yeah, yeah. This is not for. We no debating today. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no debate, man. I'm asking you a question. You can give me a three word answer, man. No, but like this is this is a extended topic. It's a very uh, wide topic. It's very topic. wide. There ain't no wide topic. Have, we're gonna have to go into slavery. We're gonna have to. You go are into slave, you are a sellout, man. Come on. Yeah. Okay. How are you gonna expect me to answer to you if you if if you insult me? Anyway, block yeah, that guy. We tried, we tried, we tried. Yeah, <laughs> and also on top of that's a technical error. But yeah, we've tried to talk to um Tehran. He's obviously for blood today. As I said, it's not the time to do this today. We it's not the time. It's not the time. It's not the time. Questions and answer with Ali Dawa. What is the name of the program? Questions and answer with Aridawa. We have time to answer the guy about shaving his his arm. We have a, we have time to answer the guy. He missed the prayer. If he can add it one or two sujood or bowing down, but the guy he asked him, "You are black," and Muhammad he owned black slaves. Why? There's no answer. Aridawa, Aridawa. He can answer anything you want. Yeah, I remember. How would we know that Christianity is wrong? Can you debunk the Trinity in one minute? Are you saying disciples never met Jesus? Please be honest and answer this question. <laughs> be honest. Two Muslim Abdul asking a liar, be honest when? And then Lili Dawa, he says, anything that is in the creation cannot be God. That's deep. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God. Yeah, that's it. Anything in the creation cannot be God. Before I start, I want to let you guys know, inshallah. And this is the same uh, guy. He is saying he is inside the creation. He was uh, pressured by a Christian to explain Hadith Nuzul. He said a statement which contradicts the consensus of all of the Muslims. He you mean he destroyed Islam? I mean, why Muslim don't say it? He destroyed Islam. And the guy, especially now, he is refuting himself. So the guy, he called you, asking why Muhammad owned black slaves. Brothers and sisters, we can answer the question, but not now. Not now, not now. Now we cannot answer this question. Okay. This question have different time, different location, have different uh, uh, recipe, uh, yeah. Your hadith says Ali, um, Ali, Allah descends to the lowest heaven yes. on the last part of the night. Yes. Can you explain to us what that means? Yes, sure. So, I asked him a question, he replied with another question. No, I'm going to respond. Okay, but, okay, I'll yeah. answer, I'll answer. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation, you said the seven, uh, the lowest... <coughs> Anything that in the creation can't be God. <laughs> the same guy. I mean, isn't it wonderful to be stupid and you refute yourself? You know, do the Muhammadan like remember even what they say yesterday? They are like their prophet. He is the same guy who said anything enter his creation can't be God. Ten days after, yeah, enter he Allah, he entered his creation. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. So the Kaaba is a fraud. The Kaaba covered by Pupu. Either the bird pissing on it, and we bring a vacuum machine to clean it, or the flood cover it by Pupu. The Muhammadan they claim this is the house of Allah. The Muhammadan they claim Allah He chose the best location. This is the most holy location. Allah told Abraham to build the house there. He told and by the way, the Muslims even they don't even have one good story about who is the first one to build this to build the the Kaaba. Uh, 
uh, there is a story is that the one who the first one who built the Kaaba it was the angels and then if you remember there is a video of Mufti Mink he, he explained how Allah he sent Adam in Sri Lanka you know now I actually I think I think Adam he was sent to Sri Lanka I agree uh, because I don't know I I like tea and obviously I'm like my grand 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 grandfather you know Sri Lanka is a thing you know you know the thing so how you explain to me why we like tea all of us you know unless our grandfather uh, uh, Mr. Adam uh, uh, peace be upon him he went to Sri Lanka and he brought tea with him and we drank tea from since then and became in our blood you know uh, Mm. <laughs> Sometime YouTube uh, help me. I type in Arabic. <laughs> YouTube uh, make it in English. Sometime. Uh, I'm still typing in Arabic. Let us switch the language. Where, where Adam was sent down, brother? Where Adam was sent down, brother? Most of you, most of you do not know. And by the way, all those stories are true stories. You know, I mean, they are historian. We have a story in the time of Adam. They wrote about this when Adam was there. You know, like Adam here, where, where you, they made an interview, like, you know, BBC. Huh? And they said to him, Adam, where you landed when you landed? So, you know, Adam, he told them I was landed in Sri Lanka. And they asked him, what is the proof? He put his hand uh, in his pocket and he got some Sri Lanka tea. Yeah. Oh, for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she go there? The continent. Precisely. Sri Lanka. Do you see? Do you see how what is beautiful about the Mohammedan? They knew even where precisely. Where? True story. Where did he land? Did he land? He was. He wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed, meaning he <laughs> dropped. But Allah placed him on the earth. Yeah, yeah. This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he says that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil Hind. He came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. If you go there, you will find it green and beautiful as though it is not from this earth, but it is. I'm not trying to imply anything, but I'm just saying it is so beautiful, maybe because the Sri Lankans have kept it that way. Uh, and then, you know, there's somebody asking me to go and debate a Muslim channel. You, you and you, them, they are potato. I went there actually after this person he posted, a person who was speaking about the satanic verses. He said to him, give me an authentic hadith about the satanic verses. The guy, he said, I don't have any. The Muslim in this channel, he said to him, okay, I'm done. I'm done. You and them, they are a bunch of dokies. The satanic verses is in the Quran. It's a proven in the Quran, you stupid. Isn't it the Quran says, whatever shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad will take it off? How you want to ask for authentic hadith? Bunch of potatoes. Anyway, so where, where Jeddah, where, where, where uh, sorry, uh, uh, Eve, she landed. She landed in Jeddah. But it's a beautiful place. It is, it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. But he just said for certain, uh, you know, uh, what uh, he said? Uh, hold on. He said in here. Precisely. He said precisely, right? He said precisely Sri Lanka. And now he's saying not certainly. Sri Lankans have kept it that way. Hmm. But it's a beautiful place. It is, it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We mm. don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. Mm. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? Where, where? In Jidda. 
Where is Jeddah? Where, where? Jeddah is in the Arabian Peninsula, in what we know today as Saudi Arabia. And so are you telling me that if she did not land in the, in the ceiling of the Kaaba? What the heck? But there was no Jeddah at that time. I mean, guys, look what Allah did. Allah, uh, he sent Adam. Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka. I'm not changing the topic, by the way, our topic about the Kaaba. If you are a Muslim, you can join us. Let us go to Google Map, Google Earth. Okay. Always, always, you know, you notice uh, that Muslims, they are very smart people, very well educated about geography, about precisely, precisely Sri Lanka. Precisely. Okay. So I'm, I am now in Google Earth. I will, I will put it on the screen. And I type Sri Lanka. Eh, not Sri Lanka restaurant, idiot. Google. Sri Lanka country. Eh, not Sri Lanka airline. What's wrong with Google? All right. I type Sri Lanka, it show me everything except the, what I'm looking for. So, this is Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is an island, as you see. And Adam, he landed there. And then Adam, he did 40 times Hajj to the Kaaba. Yes, yes, he did Hajj, 40 times. Each time, he go backward, forward, between Sri Lanka and the Kaaba. Do we have any Muslim can explain to us how Adam was able to go all the way to Mecca and Sri Lanka as an island? 40 times. Anyone? The Kaaba was in the time of Adam and it was built by the angels. When he went there, he found 40,000 angels waiting for him in Mecca. And Eve, she landed in Jeddah. Which, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, look, the husband is in Sri Lanka. The wife is in the other side of the earth, in Jeddah here. Look where Jeddah is. Uh, I, will, I will make a dot so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, all right. Let me draw an arrow. This is Jeddah. Oh, man, not this one, hold on. Arrow, arrow. Here we go. This is Jeddah. And this is Sri Lanka. If we ask the Mohammedan, how Adam, he went all the way to Saudi Arabia 40 times to visit Mecca. How he did it? Any Muslim can tell me? The guy is in an island. He is the first man. He don't have kids yet. Even his wife is not there. His wife, as you see in Jeddah. He have no helper. He have no tools. He have no hammer. This is the first man, naked man, just naked. He came down to this earth and now he is going to do Hajj all the way to Mecca. Don't ask questions. I'm not going to ask questions. I want to ask you not to let me ask you a question. Just tell me what happened. I'm not going to ask questions. How this man, he went all the... How, how he knew about Mecca? 
how he can go to Mecca. Why Allah sent Eve in Jeddah and he sent him? I mean, what is that? And how they met again? In WhatsApp? Instagram? Maybe she opened a Facebook page. Yeah, maybe Adam, maybe Adam, he walked in the water. I, I heard that's the first, according to Darwin, the first human being was a duck. Walk, walk, walk. So all the story of the Kaaba is nothing but a stupid story. I mean, who is going to build there anything in the middle of the desert? There is nothing. Nobody heard about the city in history. No historian wrote about it. Nobody, nobody, there's nothing about it. And as you see, just a hundred years ago, this city was nothing, totally, until a hundred years ago. He walked in water, it's possible. I don't think it's not only possible. I think uh, my grandfather, Adam, he can walk in water, he can walk on Eve, he can walk when he's sleeping, he can walk in the space. I mean, come on, he's Adam. Don't you see he landed from heaven? You know? You know, once I was debating a sheikh, he was from Lebanon. And this guy, he claimed to be educated. So he said to me, uh, why you are making fun? In the Bible, it says that uh, God, he kicked Adam out of heaven. I said, in my, 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 my book, the garden, the so-called heaven, you call it heaven, it's just a garden. It's in the in the earth. It's not. It's not in the sky. He said it's the same. It's the same in Islam. It's not in the sky. I said you idiot. Are you sure? <laughs> As usual. And you know when the Muslims uh, at that time this guy he did not know much about me. He did not know when I say, "Are you sure?" That's mean there's a disaster is coming. He said it's for sure. I'm sure. I said are you sure? And you know the Muslims they are trying to like to help him. I say brother, no, you are wrong. Brother, you know, brother, you know, like, you know, I said, are you sure? And the stupid guy is not like looking at the chat. He said, absolutely, I swear by Allah. I said, isn't it the Quran says, Ehbutu, get down? The coward, after we finished the debate, he went to YouTube and he reported for copyright. <laughs> Imagine, he's calling me in my channel. <laughs> and... He's debating me in my, you know, and he went to YouTube and he reported me for copyright because he didn't want anyone to see that he is a sheikh from Lebanon and he's stupid to the point did not know if Adam was down in the ground or he was in heaven. The guy was very sure, you know. So as you see, the stupid Kaaba is, you know, it just, it just doesn't make sense in any way. But so what is the solution? Where is the Kaaba? What is the Kaaba for? If you go in the Quran, you will find something very interesting. You will see the Quran, sometime called the Kaaba al Bayt, and sometime called the Kaaba, or so called Mecca, Bakka. Then you ask yourself, the verse is so clear, chapter 3, verse number 96, it says, The first house established for mankind is the one at Bakka. You ask the Muslims, what is Bakka? There's a huge difference between Bakka and Mecca, you know. B, M, the first letter is gone, you know. There's totally different. Bakka. The most time they try to fix it, they say, well, you know, this is the same in different languages, you know, like sometimes the letter can be said, like the letter, uh, as an example, in Aramaic, uh, uh, different uh, accents. So sometimes they say Sams, sometimes they say Shams. Shams means sun. Sams means, means sun too. So sometimes the letter seen become sheen. Ish, s, you know. But here is different. Here is this is, you know, ba and m. Which language change? 
you know, like seen and sheen, they are like same letter, but just adding dots when you are writing them. But this is different. Bakka is not the same as Mecca. And uh, some other Muslims, they try to bring a solution. They say there was a mistake in the writing. So it's possibly it was Mecca. Uh, the word says be Mecca, not, you know, Bakka. Uh, but that will make the Quran corrupt too, because that's that's not a good news for the Muslims. So the majority of Muslims, they say it's the same name. Bakka is the same as Mecca. Now, there is some studies, I saw them. Uh, in the beginning, you know, I wasn't really convinced with them, like uh, about uh, Petra, I saw a documentary. Uh, like I saw in the documentary, the, this gentleman, he said that most of the mosque, they are facing the direction of uh, the east. Which is old mosque, supposedly. But the answer for that, well, those are not mosques, really. When the Muslims occupy them, uh, they convert those locations into mosques. So that proved nothing. But then there is more study done, and uh, you know, which is really possible that maybe they were talking about Petra in Jordan. You see, Betra, Bakka. Hmm. But there is even better solution for this. In Yemen, there is a temple. It's called the Temple of Al Makkah. Makkah. In the language of Yemen, Qa can be switched to Kaf, depend in the accent and the location. Makkah, Mecca. See? The, the, it's the same exact word. So if we go right now and we search for the Temple of Al Makkah, we will find a lot of interesting information about it. Uh, let me uh, search for it. Temple of Al Makkah. This is the Sabian temple for the moon god. For a long time, uh, uh, this, uh, like historian, they thought that this is really a temple for the sun god, the sun god, not uh, not the moon god. But then finally, they come to agreement after they were able to uh, read the language, the old language. It's a Sabian temple, and it is the temple of the moon god, which is al Makkah. Uh, let us see. <clears throat> I will give you a link so you can read about it. And you can search the most updated uh, study. I don't know how old this article is. The, the earlier, the better. Uh, they have a different name for it. They call it Awam. But the real name, really, is al Makkah. Uh, al Makkah. Let me give you another link, which shows the name, not the name they are using here in this website. Uh, let's see. In this website here, they are saying the temple of Al-Makkah was both a moon and sun god for the Sabian. What I learned really, it is just the moon god. Uh, let me search more.
Yeah, it looks like here we found a book. I don't want a book. Let us see. Another book. I don't want book. Okay. Anyway, maybe you can search yourself. This is how you search for the name, al Makkah Temple, you know. And here you will see, Al means just, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the old language, which is extend from the Aramaic, as you see, this is Sabian Temple. The second you say Sabian, you are talking about Aramaic language. The second you say Sabian, this is Aramaic language. However, those people are not Aramaic, but obviously the influence of the Aramaic religion went all the way to the point even the Sabian they believe that the Pharaoh himself all the rulers of Egypt they were especially the Pharaoh the Pharaoh was killed uh, when uh, uh, Moses he crossed the sea according to the Quran uh, that Pharaoh he is a Sabian this is why the Sabian they hate the Jews they consider the Jews the enemy of you know Sabianism so this is Al-Maqqa temple and then if you go to uh, to the Mecca uh, pictures, you will find in the Kaaba, there's something called a Ruknul Yamani. Let me find it in English, not in Arabic, so I can show you. The Yemeni corner, Kaaba. All right. Here you will notice something very strange. In the Kaaba, there is a, an open window in the skirt. Why? In the other side, just the other corner, there's a black stone. But what is making this one is special. Why they are open it? Because people, they have to come and kiss it and touch it. Muhammad, he said, whoever of you touch the Yemeni corner and the black stone, all his sin will be erased. But what is why it's called Yemeni corner? Because those stones, you will notice even their look is different. Let me see if I can get a better picture. Those stones, few stones, they are inserted in the wall and they brought from the temple of al Makkah in Yemen so Mecca today is a counterfeit of al Makkah temple that is a huge majestic temple we can't even compare between it and uh, the Kaaba little tiny room I mean after all those thousands and thousands of years if you go and check this uh, this temple you will see how huge it is now you know, this is after all those thousands of years. What is left from it is amazing. So you can imagine one day how among us this, uh, this temple was. Not like the Kaaba room, just a room. You know, Kaaba is a cube. So what people used to do, they used to go and do Hajj to this temple. The Arab... They said, why want to go all the way there? What about we bring some stones from this holy temple? We put them in the Kaaba. We build our own house, temple, small town, fit with the size of Mecca, small, small village. And we insert them here. And then we promote it to people around us. They come and they touch it and they pray around it. And it work. People start coming. There's a Muslim historian who made a study uh, in his book, he proved that there was 26 Kaaba, 26, not one, in the Arabian Peninsula. So obviously it was a very popular to build the Kaaba and bring stones from this temple so you can get 
let us say, the blessing of the gods. It wasn't one Kaaba, it was 26. And the black stone simply is just another worship for different reason for different God, the God of fertility. So women who cannot have babies, they used to go around the Kaaba naked when they have their period time, because obviously if you have a period, that means you are not carrying a child. So when they have their period, they go and they touch their private part and they insert their hand with the blood inside the black stone. And then the male come after that and he scratch his penis inside the black stone, which is made in the shape of a vagina. But now there's nothing left of that black stone. There's only uh, a frame and wax. This is what is left of the black stone. Let me put the screen for you. If you look at this old brown, like it's it's black, right? Yeah, from uh, like from distance it look black, but in reality there's nothing left. What is left there is just wax, and the real stones are little fine, you know, tiny small ones. Hardly you can even see them. So the black stone used to be in the shape of a vagina totally, like now. This is how you how you see it from, from a distance. You see how different it is? This is how the stone is from a distance. But the second you get to closer, you will not see the same. You will see brown walks and little tiny stones in the middle. Those are the leftover of the real black stone, supposedly. And this is additional proof, you know. Uh, yeah, we can we can have reference for sure. Uh, you know, uh, I, I can give you a, a, a tafsir about, you know, do you remember when Muhammad, he said, uh, the black stone used to be white like milk? And then the sin of Bani Adam made it black, which means being black is because being sin, sinner which is additional racism statement, you know, clear racism. So it was white like milk, white like milk is being good. Black is sin, but is, is the black stone sinning? No, but because, you know, you cannot have a baby because you are committing sin. Why uh, Allah, the God of uh, uh, the fertility, Baal, he will not give you a baby because he did something wrong. So what do you do? You go around the Kaaba, you walk naked, you touch your vagina, you insert your hand with the blood in the thing, in the in the black stone, and then your husband or your whatever partner go after you. He's naked too, and then he insert his penis in the black stone, and then Allah will bless you with babies. If we go in the hadith here, we will find the following: even the Muhammadan could not hide the truth that the Muhammadan used to go around the Kaaba naked, totally naked, not like no bikini. Like, don't think about a bikini. No, no, no. There is no bikini. Let us show you the hadith. This is why in the judgment day, all mankind, they will meet Allah naked. You cannot meet Allah waiting, wearing your clothes. This is a very early pagan practice. You have to strip totally. This is a nude religion, nude, literally. As you see here, what is the name of the chapter? The book of uh, uh, pilgrims. Okay, what they used to do? The people of Quraysh, the Arab, they used to go around the Kaaba doing tawaf, naked, nudity, in the state of what? Nudity. And then you need to ask yourself, what was the religion make somebody what is what uh, exactly what is the religion they are practicing what is the religion they are practicing required to go totally naked around the kaaba and you will notice something very important you see 
when Jesus, he went to the temple, and not even in the temple, like, you know, the, the temple have many uh, yards. The outskirt yard, the very out yard, Jesus, he saw people buying and selling, right? What Jesus did? Anyone remember? I'm sure all of you, you know. He flipped the table on them. He started kicking them out, and he said, you made the house of my father a bazaar. Right? Okay. So, you because you made my the house of my father a bazaar, uh, you know, uh, that's disgusting. Jesus could not take it. Even though we know that Jesus is very, uh, like, peaceful person. He's not the kind when I go and use violent. But he could not accept that. You will notice not a single time, Muhammad, in the whole Quran, and I want you to take this note, very important. In the whole Quran, not a single time Muhammad, he said something against it. Are you with me? Isn't it strange? I mean, uh, Muhammad, he made verses about uh, 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 correcting the year. You know, like the Arab, they correct the year because they are using the lunar calendar, which is correct to do. Because the lunar calendar, if you don't correct it, uh, the calendar will be messed up. This is why the Muslim, they celebrate Muhammad's birthday sometime in June, sometime in February, sometime in July, sometime in August, sometime in October, November, because the, the month keep moving because Muhammad, he forbidden that. So Muhammad, he forbid and he made a verse about it and he make it like a sign of some Satan to do that, to correct the year. But he never once spoke against women and men going around the Kaaba totally naked. How we can explain that? So Muhammad, he spent his life living in Mecca, not even once he screamed saying, shame on you. Stop doing that. It doesn't make sense, right? A prophet of God? He never get upset once. Muhammad, he used to go and with, with uh, the rest of them naked. You know, you remember uh, Uthman, the catcher boy, he said, that Muhammad, he was not Abrahamic. Do you remember? He's not Abrahamic. He did not even know what is Jibreel. Quraysh, they were, you know, they were uh, uh, pagan. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. He did not come from Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Exactly. So Muhammad, the first 40 years of his life never heard of Abraham. We just heard this guy. He is not, he don't even know what is Gabriel. He never heard of the angel Gabriel. A Jewish child, he knew Gabriel. A Christian child, he knew Gabriel. The man who is 40 years old, he do not know who is Gabriel. So what he was doing for 40 years. In fact, the Quran confirmed that Muhammad all his life was Najis. How we can prove that? Let's go to the Quran. Chapter 108, which supposedly actually uh, in the beginning of the Quran, not the end, but now they, went, they have it in the, in the, at the end. Look what the verse is saying. This is the Muslim translation. We can change the translation. You will find different meaning. Totally different meaning. However, you will notice here that Allah is saying to Muhammad, we gave you something, it's called Al-Kawthar. Now the Muslim, they translate saying Kawthar means river in paradise. That's very weird. But this is a different story. We will go back to it. Uh... 
Muhammad he prom you know he he promised Muhammad something, and then he is saying to him to go and do sacrifice, sacrifice to him only. So what Muhammad was sacrificing before that too? Any Muslim can help us? Do we have any uh, any Muslim would like to help us? What Muhammad was sacrificing to? Here he is saying to him, sacrifice only to me. What Muhammad was doing before? That can be found in different verse in the Quran. Chapter 74, verse number 5. You will see here, it says, and keep away from the rajas. What does that mean? The Muslim translation says the idols. Purify your garment. So Muhammad was najis. This is the first time Allah, he telling Muhammad supposedly, it's time for you not to go and sacrifice for the idols and not to go naked around the Kaaba by the rest. But nowhere Allah, he spoke supposedly against being naked. Like naked here is not mentioned. It just said, stay away from the idols. Purify your garment. This is supposedly actually the first verse Muhammad he received, the first chapter. Some Muslim they say it is the one where the angel he squeezed him. But you will notice here that this is speaking about Muhammad. Uh, he is like uh, covering himself with the garment. And if you read the story, you will see that when the angel appeared to him with 600 wings, Muhammad was extremely terrified and he went to his wife and he told her cover me cover me warp me warp me what's wrong with me and then Muhammad he received this arise and war because you can't even scared terrified you know say Allahu Akbar your garment purify why is dirty what happened what happened with the garment and keep away from the idols so I will not say to somebody keep away from the idols unless he is an idol worshipper correct why I want to say to him purify you see I purify that's mean you are not clean stay away from the idols that mean you are following the idols Muhammad never spoke against going around the Kaaba naked. Never even mentioned it once. And nobody in the Islamic history even, you know, ask how come Muhammad never went against it. Do we have any Muhammadan here? Any Muhammadan? So, my you know my opinion about Mecca Mecca and the Kaaba is nothing but a counterfeit of other cities same as Bakka Mecca is a counterfeit of the city or the temple of al maqqa al maqqa Mecca Mecca in case you do not know you can ask anyone the, the Muslim themselves they will agree that some locations in Yemen, they say the letter Qaf instead of Kaf. Vice versa in Arabia, they say the letter uh, Kaf, which means K, instead of Qa. And actually, until now, if you go to many areas in the Middle East, you will find, like as an example, in Egypt, they say, they don't say J, they say Gay, Gay, you know? Uh, they, uh, uh, if you go in certain areas in the Middle East, the word, uh, uh, the letter Qa, they say A. Ah. They don't say Qa, A, ah. you know. It's just to, let us say, uh, to make it more acceptable, like, you know, Qa, you know, it's disgusting, like, you know, Qa. 
So they make it a. You know? So it just to beautify the language, they have different dialect and different accent. And this is explain why Mecca become Makkah became Mecca and Mecca became Mecca. Do we have any Mohammedan? You know, I cannot confirm about the Kaaba was in Petra or not, but for sure, uh, the study made by a professional Muslim confirm that there was 26 Kaaba. 26. Not one, not two, not three, not four. When Islam came, they destroyed all the other 26, so Mecca will be the, the only one competing. Because you see, it's like Las Vegas. You know, if you have other Kaaba, People will not come to your Kaaba. Why do they want to come? It's like the mall. At that time, it's just a, it's a mall. It's a religious mall. It's a religious mall. At the same time, you can buy, you can sell. Uh, you know, uh, there's uh, even the Muslims agree with that. So every town, they build a mall called Kaaba. And they bring to it things which is religious. So that will attract all religion. Even the Mohammedan, they agree that around the Kaaba there was 365 idol according to them. Why they have all this uh, variety of idols? Not only one, like two, three, four. Because you know, it's, a, it's a bazaar. The more idol you bring, the more choices there is and the more business we do. In fact, even visiting the Kaaba, Hajj, like now they do, the Muslim, they do Hajj and Umrah, etc. All of this was for money. And even the Quran confirmed that. If you go to the chapter of at tawbah in chapter 9, verse number 28, it says that non-Muslims are dirty, filthy, najis. But if you read carefully, at the end of the verse here it says, And if you fear poverty, Allah will enrich you, if he will, out of his bounty. And right away Muhammad says, attack the Christian and the Jews, and force them to pay money. The verse after it. So the jihad was not really done for the business of Allah, but it is for the bounty, for the money. Are you with me? It's in the front of your eyes. So now they forbid everybody from coming to Mecca unless he's a Muslim. But now Mecca will die. The purpose of the Kaaba is to bring everybody. And now if the Muslims only who live in that area, they are in control of the city and nobody can enter it, they have a business problem. So how we can solve it? Right away Muhammad, he gave command to attack the Christians and the Jews and steal their money. So Allah will enrich you. Do you see it? If you fear property, Allah will find a solution. That's Muhammad. Let us attack the Christian and the Jews, take their money. And Muhammad, he knew very well that those people are worthy. And this chapter is the last chapter in Muhammad's life. So Muhammad, he never forbid people from entering Mecca all his life. Never. He never have a problem with the idols. The Quran proved that. Because until the last year of his life, this is the last year of his life, Muhammad have pagan in Mecca. People going naked around the Kaaba. And Muhammad has no complaint. And then Muhammad, he switched the mood because he don't want, he come with this idea to force not anyone to stay in the, I mean, to not to let anyone except Muslims because he want to first the local, not to, you know, if you don't want to lose your house, convert. Convert so he can stay. Okay, we convert. I mean, that's it. He, he took over the city. Convert, you can stay. 
No more Mishrikeen. Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, and if you go right now to see the Kaaba, the Kaaba is a huge business for Saudi Arabia. They make hundreds of millions, billions of dollars from those poor Bangladesh and Pakistan. You know, if you go, if you go and ask how many person in Bangladesh they come to do the, the to do a Hajj, let us see. I will do a little search. How many people did Hajj from Bangladesh? This year, 127,000 from Bangladesh. I just search online, you know, Arab News, it says 127,000 from Bangladesh. What is the average of a cost to go all the way to Mecca, hotel, food, airline. I will do this. I will search flight from Bangladesh to Mecca. You can do it from your side. Flight from Bangladesh. To Mecca. You know, we are saying Bangladesh, uh, you know, generally speaking, I don't know what is the most, uh, uh, the biggest airport. Bangladesh. Dhaka to Mecca. which you have to go to airport of Jeddah. And then we will see what the price. Okay. Uh, let us see. An average of a thousand dollar between like 900, something like that, 800, 850,000, yeah. But what is the income of somebody from Bangladesh? And how long is going to take him to make a thousand dollar? You know? This is just for the airplane. How much is going to be for the hotel? How much is going to be for the food? How much is going to uh, taxis, buses, uh, uh, buying gifts? Because you know, when you go to Hajj, you know, you have to buy gifts for everybody in the family, like from the Holy Land, you know, like rosary, you know, etc. Uh, they call it in Arabic, Masbaha. Uh, all kind of stuff. Uh, you bring water of Zamzam with you, you know, which is not really Zamzam. Uh, I mean, it is really a lot of money. So if we say now, you can use your calculator. If an average person in Bangladesh, he need to spend, I mean, at least $3,000, at least, you know, $3,000. This is just for Bangladesh. This is just in, you know, like for the Hajj. 3,000 x 127 or 28. Let's make it 127,000. Yeah. 381 million. Just from Bangladesh alone. Is that amazing? This is if it's only three thousand, which is not going to be can't be really the, the, the case. 
and then Indonesia, and then uh, you know Pakistan and India, and so this is a treasure, a lot of money. Imagine if we can force everybody to come to Las Vegas. Las Vegas will will be you know making money like crazy, and then if you go right now compare between the pictures of the Kaaba in the time of Muhammad and the Kaaba right now, you will see seven stars hotel, not only five stars hotel. All the areas around the Kaaba is a very fancy hotels. So who can afford to stay there? There's people who can afford it. The cheap one, I mean, the poor one, they will go maybe and they will rent a tent. You know, look at those hotels. Look at this. They're trying to copy the one in the Big Bang, Big, Big, Big Ben in England, Mr. Bean. Look at the buildings around, you know, how they are growing tall, high. But this is what happened. This is what the oil does. Before, Look at the hotel rooms in the around the Kaaba. You know? Now who is the one who can afford those hotel rooms? There is people who can afford it. Limousine, you know, look at this hotel. Look. Those are hotels around the Kaaba. The Kaaba itself has a small tiny room. The hotel around it is majestic. What do you think they are getting out of it, Christian Prince? Money. It's a business, as we showed you from the Quran. All is about business. This is not about God. What God? I mean, uh, you see, do you need to go to meet God somewhere? Just ask yourself. You know, Jesus, he gave us the answer. If you want to pray, go to your closet. I do not need to go to Jerusalem to, to, to pray to God or to get the blessing of God. I can go to see where the Messiah was, where they crucified him. Fine. But I do not need to go to a place so I can be granted heaven. Muhammad, he made it clear that if you touch the black stone in the Yemeni corner, it erase your sin. Just touch them. Let us see. <clears throat> I'm trying to find the hadith. If you touch the black stone in the Yemeni corner, you see here all of this is about you know when you go to the house of Allah, how your sin is forgiven. Uh, same, you know how your sin will be forgiven. So like Muhammad made it clear, you have to go. Uh, you know, it's a must to go. At least he make, even he make it clear that at least you do it once in your lifetime, at least. But what make it even more horrible, he claim that if you touch the black stone, let me turn off the screen so I don't blind you with sc scrolling down. Uh, the black stone and the Yemeni corner, those will erase all your sin. Here we go. We found it. And this is nothing but paganism. Like it's saying touching a statue will erase your sin. Because at the end of the day, those are just rocks. Oh Abu Abdul Rahman, a person asking Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching these two corners? He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, touching them erases your sin. Do you see it? 
Do you see it? A Muslim saying, if you see the Kaaba, you would prostrate. You know the story of Al Qurtubi, oh, sorry, Al Qurmuti. Al Qurmuti not only he saw the Kaaba, he smashed the Kaaba, he destroyed the Kaaba, he pissed on the Kaaba, he took the black stone, and he kept it there for more than twenty-one years. And not only that, when he was pissing on the Kaaba and he destroyed it, and he killed ten thousand Muslims around the Kaaba, he was challenging Allah to send his birds. There's a story in the Quran, which is a fiction story, about an army of elephant coming to destroy the Kaaba. Allah, he sent birds to destroy them. But as you see, Saudi Arabia just accepted defeat from the Shia, and they accept to sign peace agreement with Iran because they lost the war in Yemen. They lost. And the Kaaba was destroyed many times. And the, who is the one protecting the sky of, of Saudi Arabia? The American. So when Al Qurtubi, you can even search in YouTube, you will see Muslim videos about it. How sorry, Al Qurmuti. So Al Qurmuti he took the black stone, and the Muslims have to pay him to bring it back. Imagine they have to pay him. They ask, you know, like uh, uh, the, the the Caliphate of Egypt, who is a Shia, Al Hakim bin Abdullah Al Fatimi. This guy was a crazy. This guy is a uh, you know he he's, he like boys. He have sex with men. Uh, he don't use horses. He use boys in the front of him in his courage, uh, and they have to to be wearing see through. He come with the crazy orders every seven years. Uh, he have a new order. As an example, there is a there is a food uh, in Egypt. I don't know if anyone here from Egypt. It's called mulukhia. Mulukhia. Okay, what the heck is this mulukhia? I don't know what the name in English. What Molochia is? Molochia is not really the name of the... Uh, here we go. It, I will show you on the screen what it's called. Uh, Corocos Otiros in the Latin. Yeah, something like that, you know. So Molochia was called Molochia, which means uh, royal. This guy is crazy. He forbid anyone in Egypt to eat this dish. If he eat it, he will be executed. No matter who, even his own cook. So when he died, the word Molochia, the, the, the Egyptian, they start making fun of it to Molochia. Molochia mean grab it. Anyone can grab it. Before it was royal. The police, the secret police, the, the caliphate soldiers, they go in between the houses to smell if somebody cooking Molochia, which is Molochia, which means royal. It's called, the dish is called royal. This guy, he loved this dish. It's very tasty, by the way. It's very, very tasty. So, he come with all kind of orders, and he killed a lot of Christians, this crazy man. A lot of Christians, they slaughtered them. He's a Shia, not Sunni. He liked to have sex with the boys. He had to like sex with men. He's mentally ill. And not only that, he claimed to be Allah on earth. And then he met his son. He have a son. Any one of you heard of uh, an Islamic sect it called a Druz? Druz, anyone heard of them? Druz? Druz they have a leader. This leader, he is the spiritual son of this caliphate. So, Al Hakim Brahm Allah is Allah on earth. Allah, he came in his body. His spiritual son was in the, uh, in, in the borders of Israel uh, in Lebanon. Uh, and they have letters between them, between Allah, which is the caliphate, and his son. Sound like, you know, somebody copying Christianity or something, you know, like God, son, you know. Uh, those letters are called the letters of hikmah, which mean the wisdom. So the Druze, until now, 
They don't share their book with anyone. You cannot go and buy their book from the library. You cannot learn about the religion from schools. Even if you are a Durzi, you are from them. You can learn about it only when you are 40 years old. Let us see if I can find you. Some English source, maybe. Uh, I guess that will be not easy task. Let me try something. Maybe we can find uh, their book. Finally, somebody scan it. Uh, let us see. I see many printed books about them, but I don't think any of them is really the book itself. And by the way, those people believe in Tawheed too. In fact, they call themselves al muwahidun al duruz It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I found many books, but none of them is really what I'm looking for. Uh, uh, Imam Tawhidi is a joker, you know. Actually, those people are more dangerous than, you know, a, a, an honest Muslim. He's, this, this guy is a Shia. Shia, they lie a lot. Shia, they lie without, like, no limitation of how, how big the lie can be. This is how I see this uh, Tawhidi thing. Yeah. So you can maybe, you can search about them and try to read. Uh, but they call themselves al muwahidun And uh, one of the funny thing about those uh, Druze, uh, there's a huge number of them actually in the Israeli army. You know, uh, the Arab, they always attack them, the Bedouin. Uh, and the Muslim don't consider them Muslims. Yet they claim, like when you speak to them, they claim to be the, like the true Muslims, you know. But in reality, they have nothing to do really with Islam. The Quran is not their book, you know. They have nothing to do with the Quran. But they will never admit to say that they are not Muslims. And you will see how even they dress differently, their clothes is differently, their beard is different, their look is different. They are most of them they are white, you know, very white, as you see. And they serve in the army of Israel with no problem at all. Anyone have a question? See, this guy is holding the flag of Israel. Yeah. And they don't care really for, uh, you know, any of what Muslims really care for. Like, they drink, uh, they sleep around, 
Uh, Muslims, they sleep around too, but they do it like by legal terms, which means like you do muta. Uh, you know, the rules, they don't really care for those things. They drink, they uh, gamble, they, uh, they don't have really... Yeah, they are not really strict in their religion. They are strict in their ethnic, which means they consider themselves as an ethnic, and they defend each other. And Israel, you know, Israel used them very well, you know, in, in their war with the Arab. But, you know, those people at the same time, they can switch side in a second. So what, what is famous about them, if you are strong, they are your friends. If you are weak, they hate you. You are, you are the enemy. You know, they take, the, they take the side of your enemy. So whoever the winner, they take his side. And there is a reason for that always. Since the Fatimian, the Caliphate, his kingdom destroyed, they don't have protection no more. And the Arab was attacking them from everywhere, the Bedouin specifically. So always they seek protection by who is the bigger, the winner. You know, when the Ottoman was there, they are friend of the Ottoman. When the Christian took over Lebanon, you know, took it back, they are the friends of the Christians. When the Christian get weaker and the Muslims attack and the Palestinian, they became a friend to the Palestinian. When Israel took over, they are friend of Israel. They have no friends. Do we have any uh, why all old? No, those are the, you see, okay. I, I, I mentioned that in order to receive your religion, you have to be 40 and older. So until 40, you have no religion. Until 40, you do go do whatever you want, sleep around, take drugs, do anything. But when you are 40, now you have to become a wise person. And the reason for that, the one they follow, he start receiving the letter from his father, Allah, at the age of 40. Well, you know, the, the rules, as I said, they are... Uh, but if the Israeli get weak, the, the rules will be against you. They will take a side of the Palestinian. Depend who is... Like, in Syria, the, the rules, they love... Uh, you know, when when the president in Syria, uh, they thought he is going to collapse, the, the rules against him. They noticed, oh, he's coming back, he's going to win. They are with him now. <laughs> that is the, you know... Like, they don't have really... They are not friends to anyone. Even the Muslim, they say... Uh, the the rules are very uh, like uh, when they will like when you come to their house, they are very 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 welcoming. They have a very nice uh, reception. Let us say they make you feel like you know you are really welcome. But in the Middle East, they say uh, eat in the house of a, a Muslim. Uh, uh, hold on, no no no, I forgot. You know I, I, this is something I learned since I was a kid. So I need to remember after all those hundred years, you know, since I was born, 200 years ago. Uh, yeah, like like maybe eat in the house of a Durzi, uh, sleep in the house of a Christian. You can sleep in the house. The, the Muslims, they don't trust them, you know, but they can't trust the Christians. Christian, he will not kill you, you know. Or like they say, visit, visit the house of a Durzi and eat and, 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 and sleep in the house of a Christian. Yeah. And that because the Muslims and those people, they have a lot of enmity. Uh, and even the Christians, you know, they have, a, especially in the war in Lebanon, they have a big war of problems between each other. They killed a lot of Christians too. You know, the Middle East is, a, is messed up uh, land. And there's a lot of groups, and those are a small minority as number. And this is why, because they are small in number, uh, and through history, since the collapse of the Fatimi Caliphate, they've been heavily discriminated by the Muslim Sunni. So they have no choice except to join together to protect themselves. Like when ISIS, they start taking over Syria and Iraq, they target them heavily, you know, because they are not Muslims. 
Even though they claim they call themselves, even they, they call themselves Muwahidun, but they are not. Do we have any Muslim here? And you know, like being being evil is not something those people do. They take the side of the strong without ethic. The Israeli government, they do that too. The Israeli government, they take the side of the evil one for the sake of their benefit. As an example, when the, the terrorists in Syria, they were fighting the Assad and Iran, Netanyahu himself, he was visiting them. They built even a hospital for them in the borders. Imagine to the terrorists. Yeah. And the video is there in YouTube. And what they say in the news, they say those are Syrian rebels. But all of us, we knew those are terrorists, you know. What's Syrian rebels? As you see here, this is Netanyahu, who is the right now the prime minister of Israel. They built a hospital for those terrorists. Uh, they give them even weapon. They support them. The Syrian army cannot chase. It chase those terrorists because they are protected by, by by Israel. You know. If you think about it, why they are doing that? For me, this is make me really upset. But uh, for them, they say, okay, those people are fighting the Assad and the Iranian, the Shia. And whoever, you know, let them kill each other. You know what I mean? Why won't we don't go in war? Let them burn Syria. They are our enemy. So let us say the Israeli government, they were fueling the war. So the enemy will be destroyed. This is their view and the logic. For me, I believe this is evil. Because remember, this is what the American did. The American, they supported the Mujahideen. Literally, Mujahideen, the terrorist, in Afghanistan to fight the Soviet Union. When they finished with the Soviet Union, what the Mujahideen did? They attacked America. So you think you can use the devil for your benefit? The devil is the devil. He will bite you. It's like somebody growing a snake big and think that the snake will be his pet. Snake will never be your pet. It's a snake. Why Islam teach Jesus as only a prophet? And Hamza said, Satan cannot lie. Please kindly. Who is, who is Hamza? Who is this guy, Hamza? There's a prophet, his name is Hamza. When you ask me a question, try to make it clear. Who, who is this guy? So, Master Assassin is a question. Why Islam teaches Jesus is, as only a prophet? And uh, Hamza said, Satan cannot lie. Please kindly explain his, him and his family. I understand. Hamza is a guy in the chat. He's a guy in the chat. Oh, okay. Well, uh, first of all, uh, the Bible says, who is the Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Son and the Father, correct? So all of Islam simply is an idea to replace uh, Christianity and to place the Christ. Muhammad, even he changed his name from Qatham to Muhammad, which means the praised one, because he don't want you to worship Jesus and the one don't want you to follow Jesus. He want to replace Jesus. That is the devil. So Islam, there's no question for me. It is a satanic religion established by Satan. Uh, Hamza Adin, okay, I don't know. He said, uh, Satan don't lie. Well, at least Satan in Islam is more honest than Allah. As an example, the Quran says, Allah lie. Allah all over the Quran saying he lie. 
If you go in the Quran, you will see it says that Shaitan he told Allah, when you lied to me, when you deceived me, when you tempted me, when you uh, made me go astray, according to Muslim translation. But in Arabic, actually, it says Aghwaitani. Aghwaitani. If you ask the Muslim who man who al Ghawi, they will say to you the criminals, the filthy, the way, the one who is opposing the teaching and the guidance of Allah. But the Quran says that the one who made shaitan, shaitan, Allah, he misled him. So he will do the job he want him to do. Chapter 7, verse number 16, it says, Because you deceived me, Look at the translation. Because you have lured me. I don't know what lured me mean. Somebody tell me. I don't know really what is the correct meaning of this word. Because you have lured me. Lured me. Who's talking? Shaitan. Satan is saying to Allah, you lured me. What lured me mean? Uh, let me check the dictionary. Anybody use this word? I know there is a woman, her name is Lori, but Lord me, I don't know what is it. Lord, uh, attempt. Okay. Pursued someone to do something, to go somewhere by offering them something exciting. Okay, so is, is this is not a this is not a bad word? Is it a bad word? Is it something bad? Yeah, but the, uh, if this is if it's not bad, this is a false translation, because in Arabic it says "aghwaitani," which means you did fool me, lie to me, tempt me, to mislead me, all those together, you know. All the let us change the translator. This is chapter seven, verse number sixteen. Uh, let us go to Hilali. Here, look what they say. Because you have sent me astray. So who is the one who sent Satan astray? Allah. Okay, that means Satan is not a bad person. You know? Satan is not a bad person. Allah. He dis, he disguised him. He misguided him. Let's go and give it a different translation. And this is what is funny about Islamic translation. You cannot find one translation is decent. Uh, let us see... Uh, big tal send me astray big tal uh, darwish he caused me you caused me to go astray okay let's let us take this one because if we keep moving in this translation it's endless and they lie even this one they are lying but you caused me to go astray who's talking shit on so how shaitan become shaitan according to the Quran? Allah caused him to go astray. It was not a choice of shaitan. You know, if I am caused to be bad, can you call me bad? You know what I mean? If somebody fool me, if somebody misled me, that mean I, it was not my intention, right? So Allah He caused Satan to go wrong, to be bad. That mean Allah is Satan. If we take the same word, Rawi, you will find how the Muslim delight in translation in different place. I mean, the same word, suddenly it become criminals, the polytheist. Here we go. The same word, but for a group. Same exact word. Chapter 7, verse 175. 
Shaitan, he is one of the Rawin. Okay, what Rawin mean? Let us see. Who went astray? How he went astray? You are the one who caused him astray. We just showed you the verse. Did he go astray really? Or you make him, made him go astray? You go to the front verse. False translation. Chapter 15, verse number 42. It says, they translate the same word, look, Rawin. You see it? Even they put it for you in English. Rawin. Between two bracket, mushrikeen, which means polytheist, and those who go astray, criminals, polytheist, evil doer. So what Allah made of Shaitan, He made him evil doer. Yeah. A Muslim in the chat he is saying, "What you will do if you find that Muhammad is right?" For we already we found that Muhammad is right. You know, when Muhammad he says. Uh, You know, like he, uh, he is the guide of mankind, and then we find him saying that all of you Muslim will go to hell. So we, he, he is right, isn't it? The Quran says, "Wama minkum illa wariduha," not a single one of you, but he will enter hell. So he's right. Already, we found that Muhammad is right. I found many things about Muhammad, he's right. You know? There is no way Muhammad is not right about all Muslims going to hell. And look how the Muslims they translate, they say, pass over it. Lying. Wariduha warada shay ay ata ilayhi wa dakhalahu aw shariba minhu. If we go to the interpretation, you will see right away it says he enter hell, enter hell. Chapter 19, verse number 71. And this is your interpretation, not mine. Every single one of you Muslims will go to hell. But the Christ is the opposite. Jesus, he said, Whoever believe in me and I will live. And the one who believe in me, you know, is the one who do the fruit of me. From their fruit you shall know them not just believe because believe is a fake belief unless you know you don't do what you believe this is your quran and this is your prophet cousin ibn abbas saying uh not a single one of you but he in the exclusion of the prophet and the messengers save that he will enter it i.e hell do you see it that is a fixed audience of the of allah it's it's an it's a it's a command so the guy is saying to us, what if you find that if uh, Muhammad is right? Already we found that Muhammad is right. All of you Muslims will go to hell. There is no way a human being, he have a brain. He will follow a pervert. His wife is six years old. He admit that he was bewitched. He admit that he was controlled by the devil. He admit that he received command from shaitan. He admit that he fabricated Quran. Even when he have sex, he imagine himself having sex. He admit that he received satanic verses. I mean, name one thing for me, Muhammad did not admit. And when he get married first time, he drunk the wife father to make him think that he married his daughter to him. So even the first act Muhammad did in his life, it was a fraud. And the funny is the Muslim, they say that the Arab in the time of Muhammad, they call him as sadiq al amin which mean the honest, the truth, the trust, the worthy. But in their book it says, the guy and his wife, they drank the father of Khadija to made, her, to made him believe that he married her to him. Even his first marriage is a fraud. What kind of a decency this person? And isn't it alcohol is wrong? It turned to be that Muhammad could not be married to Khadija, which she made him a prophet later by the money, except by alcohol. Do you see how the alcohol was a great help for Muhammad? The wife, she drank her father. She invited people from Quraysh, the tribe of Muhammad. They made a party, dancing party, and all of them they drink until they drunk. This is the purpose. And then when her father get drunk, 
she took off his clothing and she dressed him with the help of Muhammad by the most expensive clothing he have which usually he wear it only in certain occasions like all of us you know even now I mean there's a clothes you wear for normal life things and there's a clothes you wear when there's an occasion so she took off the clothes of her father she dressed him with the most expensive clothing he have so when he wake up in the morning he said why I'm wearing this clothes and this what happened he woke up he said what is this why I'm wearing this clothes he said oh father you forgot you said that you married me to Muhammad and I find it astonishing that the Muslim they write this story in their book can you believe it the Muhammadan they say that anything does uh, 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 do not fit with the Prophet is taken off anything <laughs> so this is after they took all the garbage stories about Muhammad and this is supposedly fit with the Prophet this is telling you that the Muhammadan they never thought or thought about such a story as something filthy this is just to show you I'm not making things up here we go this is islamweb.net very Islamic website sponsored by the terrorists of Qatar this is the book of Asir al Nabawi Ibn Hisham volume number one page number 239 I will give you the link you can use Google translation and you will see how uh, oh sorry this is this is another one this is about Aish uh, Khadija I click at the wrong uh, sometime you know like because I'm really tired uh, I search for Khadija but anyway this one even more funny this one Khadija she asked Muhammad uh, to sit in her left leg and right leg you remember the story and she asked Muhammad if he see the angel or not but this one is good too I will give you the link anyway but this is not really what I'm looking for. Let me give you the link. Very funny story. Khadija, she confirmed to Muhammad that the one he see is an angel by doing striptees. This is a very funny story, by the way. And the funny is, the Muslim, they call it Imtihanul uh, Wahi, which means the examination of the inspiration of Allah. Examination. This is how she examined by striptease. She asked him to sit in the top of her, and when he started having sex with her, the angel he ran away supposedly, and this is how she proved to Muhammad that this is a true angel. But the story we have about uh, uh, Khadija uh, making her father drunk. Actually, this website, even they have an audio for it, you know. Uh, if you speak Arabic, you can click at the audio. Uh, but let's see if we can use Google Translation. The Hadith is in the right side of the page. I don't know if translation... Look like the translation did not work. Is that some part of the? Yeah, actually, the important part of what we want is not translated. Where it says she made him drunk. Let me try something else. Different website. Okay, we, we found it in the same website, islamweb.net. Here we go. So this is the book of Musnad al-Imam Ahmad, volume number one, page number three, one, two. And let me pause the link for you guys. You can open it with Google uh, browser, remember, because Google translation will not work unless you use Google browser. All right. And then you will see how Khadija and her husband Muhammad, who at that time he is not her husband, they cheat and they use alcohol to make her father drunk. So they can lie to him, make him think 
that he married Khadija, his daughter, to Muhammad. And this is telling you, you know, the Muslim, they say that Muhammad was from an honorable family, correct? If Muhammad was from the most honorable family, why the father of Khadija? He don't want Muhammad to marry her. You know what I'm saying? Khadija not only should be, I mean, the father should be happy that somebody is marrying his wife because this woman, she have two husbands before Muhammad. She have a bunch of kids from each. And she is way older than Muhammad. So he should hey, uh, marry her, take her, you know? No, he don't accept. Because Muhammad is from the most dishonorable family. Otherwise, I change anyone to tell me why. Even when he, after he wake up, he wanted to take his sword and he want to go and attack Muhammad. Khadija, she said to him, do you want people to laugh at you? What do you want to say to them? What do you want to say to them? You want to, you, you make yourself miserable. What you will tell the people? You were drunk? You see, she's back in mailing him. The guy he wanna, he's so angry. And this Khadija, she's a very horrible fraud. She said, what do you want? Do you want to go outside and tell them I was I was drunk and I married my daughter to Muhammad when I was drunk? She want to shame him. But in fact, he did not even say that. Even the story in front of you, it says she made him drink until he got drunk. Hmm. Do you see even how she changes the clothing? So I took off, you know, his clothing and I changed it, etc. I mean, translation is not coming really good, but it's enough to prove how Muhammad become the husband of Khadija. And the funny is, uh, they say that Muhammad was the most trustworthy between mankind. Stoning innocent people means properties and money and not adultery. I don't know what they are talking about. What, what, what innocent people? Who stone who? I know people they say things. If you want to say something to me, make a like a full sentence so I can understand what you are talking about. Remember, we are talking about many things. So if you post a comment and then suddenly you are talking about stoning, like I wasn't talking about stoning, and then you throw a stone at me, and then you say innocent people, who are they? Uh yeah, as exactly the prophet is a good model, model, role model. Uh, the five pillars of Islam is a lie. There's no such a thing, actually. You know, there's, we cannot find them. Those five pillars in Islam. Where, uh, where in the Quran it says the five pillars of Islam? So what the Muhammadan they do, they went and they collect what it means such a thing, according to their interpretation. And they say we have five. Actually, they should have six because jihad is very important in Islam, you know. But they don't add it. Uh, but if you go, uh, you ask the Muslims, in the five pillars of Islam, if there is something about not to do fornication? No. If there is anything coming from the command of God, which is like give, given to Moses? No, Muhammad he broke all the Ten Commandments given to Moses. So how come this religion, the pillars of it, is totally opposing the Ten Commandments given from God to Moses? As an example, the Muslim they have to believe in destiny. Do you remember just two days ago, we have a Muslim, he called me, and we spoke about destiny? Do you remember? And they tried to defend it about a child and when I, I showed him a child he was killed by Al-Khadr and I asked him why he was killed he said when he grow he will do bad he will become kafir but 
when I ask him, you can watch it, you will die laughing. You, you, you will see right away how he's in trouble in two seconds. You see, the Muslims, they are used to speak to an average person, you know, an average brain. I ask him, I don't know if anyone knows what what made in the video we can play it so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so when I ask him how this person when he grow, he will do bad if Allah killed him, if Allah ordered to kill this boy, how when he grow, he will do bad. If you watch the video, you will see how this guy is swallowing his tongue because now he can't explain it's stupid. But nobody asks such a question. Nobody think about it. When he grow, you know, if you go to the verse, it says when he grow, he is going to do bad. He's going to be bad. Okay. Allah, he knew the future. Allah decide the future, which means even if he does bad, it's not his fault. As you see, shaitan caused to be shaitan by Allah. If I kill, Allah made me kill. If I commit adultery, and we'll show you the difference, watch the previous video. But now, this child was slaughtered because when he grow, he will do bad. But this guy, he don't grow. You killed him. You know what I mean? How Allah, he ordered Al-Khadr to kill the guy. And when he grow, he will do bad. They say to you, Allah, he knew the future. What future? The guy don't have a future. What future? If the guy is going to die, and he now is killed, how he's going to have a future, bad future? Are you with me? This is showing you how stupid the Quran is. When he grow, he will be bad. Okay, but you order a khadr to kill him because when he grow, he will be bad. So how Allah, he saw a future will never happen. Because his destiny is to be killed. How it can be your future, which you never did. Do you understand people I'm saying? Do you see why I see this verse is very stupid? It's extremely stupid. Actually, this one alone is enough to prove Muhammad to be a certified idiot. We killed the guy, and he is a boy. And I killed him because when he grow, he will be bad. Who is the one who told Al-Khadr to kill him? Allah. Okay. But don't Allah he knew that this boy will not live anyway? How his future will be bad? Don't Allah knew that he decided that he will die when he is a child? So how Allah he speak about bad future? <laughs> Stupid. Same time, how many times we heard the Muslims speaking about why, brothers and sisters, why Jesus Christ will die for your sin? The Quran says nobody will die for the sin of anybody. Hmm? Hold on. This guy did not even do sin. Where is his sin? Where, where, is, where is his sin? He did not do any sin. Why are you killing him? The Quran, brothers and sisters, says if you killed one mankind, innocent mankind, as if you killed mankind. This is a verse from the Old Testament. This is about Moses. Even the Quran confirms it's about Moses. But you just killed an innocent person. Because an innocent person is a person who did not commit a crime. If you say he will do it in the future, still he's innocent. This is what innocent is. And even Musa, he said to him, why you are killing an innocent uh, child? Boy, it's a boy. Why you killed him? And his family are Muslims, supposedly. So Islam is a stupid religion. In one hand, they claim that Allah he knew the future, but don't Allah he knew that the kid will be killed and he have no future. If there's a future to come, he will be bad in the future. 
that is a clear contradiction because if we kill the kid, he have no future to be bad anyway. So how you saw a future which will never happen? No, this is not Zach and Naik. This is Lili Dawa. Servant girl, she says, when you are people of the book, you are not easily fooled by a counterfeit. Yeah, exactly. When you are people, we have a book. We have a book. That's why even the Quran call us. I mean, those stupid Muhammad and they call us. They say our book is corrupted, and yet they call us people of the book. It's like calling Sam Shamoon the guy with the hair. I mean, the guy he have no hair. If if our book is corrupted, that's mean we are not people of the book. So why are calling us people of the book if we don't have a book? Right. Anyway, I'm not going to stay longer because I think uh, I saw in the channel of uh, uh, Brother Sam Shamoon he is going to go live today, correct? Late? Is that correct? I saw that. So if you guys want to join his channel, let me check. Sam Shamoon. We asked people to make a summary video of my previous video about Lili Dawa. Nobody did it. Nobody. Lazy people. Let us see his coming life. Uh, oh, it's 1.30 a.m.? One, not not 12.30, one, uh, 1.30. Man, you know, Sam Shamon is going to stay late. Maybe he is not in America, I don't know. Uh, anyone have a question before we go? Yeah, always, as I say, you know, uh, Quran as a, as a book can be, uh, you know, it can't fall people who they are like high and high not necessarily taking drugs you know you are just a very shallow easy to be I want to use the word lure you know easy to be lured easy to be driven they bring you a guy he have a nice voice singing the Quran what about we hear the same verse by a guy who don't have a good voice and you will see the Quran is not what they claim when you bring somebody have a nice voice, whatever he say is going to be nice. So they try to fool you in many ways. They try to show you that we have a nice tradition, family tradition. In fact, in Islam, there's no family. You saw a family base in many multi-marriage is already broken. I mean, if you have a, if you only and your wife, and you have only children from one woman, even if they are from one woman and one father, the children, they might have a big problems between them. Jealousy, problems, inheritance, correct? I mean, he is your brother only from your father and your mother. Still, you might have a problem with him. So imagine when you each one of them is from different wife. The family is already broken. I remember once when I was a kid, I went to a Muslim kid house who was meeting in school. He come to my house, I go to his house. When I was there, he said to his brother, uh, he said, if your mother, I said, well, you stupid, why you are you saying that? How you say that to your mother? Isn't he your brother? He said, no, he is from uh, the wife of my dad. They hate each other. The wives, each one of them, she tried to take money as much as she can from the husband. And sometimes even, if things go good for their benefit, they gang against the husband. So they keep asking for money, furniture, so he will not marry a new woman and he will not divorce one of them. Because the second a Muslim man he gets rich, he replace one of his wives. He gets something new, fresh, young. 
So, Islamic uh, family is extremely broken. If you go in the Middle East, you will find that the Arab Christians, they make between 25 to 40 percent of the university students, but they are not even 10 percent or 20 percent in the best scenario. But they are the majority of doctors, engineers, lawyers, because Muslims, they just make kids, babies and marry. And again, you know, and when you are like a kid, when you start like in your nine, 10, they send you to work as a mechanic or in a grocery store or in the in the flea market or a clean shoes. Christian kids, they go to school, they take care of their kids, they go to university, etc. So there is a huge difference because the family is broken. Can you make a questionnaire how to begin debate with Muslims? Uh, you know, I, I don't uh, learn from what I do. Every person is different. Every person is different. So if you think you can make a questionnaire, questionnaire goes for everybody, I believe this is wrong. It's like a doctor. He have a medicine like Muhammad. Muhammad, he says, necklace seed is for everything, you know, except death. Do you want to practice such a medicine that anyone come to you, you give him a seed? That is not smart. So you need first to see what make this person believe, listen to him carefully, and then give him the seed which fit with the, what he just said. Not your questionnaire. You know what I mean? Everyone have his own different intelligence different background, different education, and different ages. We cannot give questions to everybody in the same way. So the first step is listen carefully what the Abdul is saying and get him busted from what he said. Like if you go and watch all my videos, the Muslim, he called me, he says something, I get him busted from what he said, not from what I say. However, in order to do that, you have to have education in the topic. If you have no education and he is a game player, he can, you know, go around it. And maybe even you will find yourself in trouble. You know, like today I saw somebody asking a Muslim about the Satanic verses. He said to him, do you have any proof, any authentic hadith? about satanic verses yeah we have they have a quran the quran says but the guy who was speaking he did not know how to say he said i know i don't but no we do we have the most authentic according to muslim the quran when allah he says he will take whatever shaitan throw in the mouth of muhammad then what is the proof you are asking for he will take whatever shaitan he throw he throw already if Allah is taking off something is not there, that's mean the verse is stupid. You know what I mean? So when they ask you, what is the proof that Muhammad receives satanic verses? The Quran. And look, uh, look at the translation, you know, uh, but Allah will supersede the tempering of Satan and confirm his verse. This is not what it says. That's false. It says Allah, he will take away. You change the translator, you will see different meaning. Totally different Quran. And this is other issue. The Muhammadan, they play games and they show you a translation which is not accurate. Read with me carefully. Not a single messenger, never, never even one. A prophet before you, but when he recite, recite what? Revelation, or narrated or spoke, Satan throw some falsehood between two brackets in it, but Allah abolish it. Abolish what? What shaitan he throw in? Okay. So you're asking me for a proof that shaitan he throw? It says in front of you. <laughs> Are you with me? Do you understand? 
So the Muslim now, he wanna make it supposedly hard for you. Do you have any authentic hadith to prove the story? The Quran, it's in front of you. Allah will take what? Will take what shaitan he throw. So if shaitan did not throw, Allah do not even need to make the verse. And by the way, there's no proof that this verse itself is not made by shaitan. Because if shaitan, he was able to make it once, throw satanic verses, in the mouth of Muhammad, shaitan, he can make it again and again and again. Especially we have many hadith confirming that Muhammad was bewitched, misled, controlled, commanded by the devil. So the Muhammadan always, they will play game with you depend on your education. How much if you speak Arabic is a different story. Number one reason actually they don't dare to call me because I person who speak Arabic. That make it make them very much intimidated, and then they notice how much you know. That will make them make poo poo in their pant. It's not only he speak Arabic. We cannot tell him, you know, when Mimi Hijab was debating David Wood, he said, ha, 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 "You do not know Arabic. You do not need bro. Allah Elijah mean God with us." He's making he's making mockery. Suddenly Mimi Hijab he speak Hebrew now, you know. So always, they will try to put you down, oh, you don't speak Arabic, oh, you do not know, oh, this is a wrong translation. They themselves, they themselves, they will say, this is a wrong translation, just to deceive you. But I have an easy way, and topic to, the topic today is very easy, actually, to prove the Islam to be false. Let us say you are a person who have no knowledge. And the Muslim, they say, ask any Muslim, is the Kaaba is the most holy place for Allah? He will say yes. Okay, how the Kaaba is flooded by poo, poo Why Allah allow it? Very easy, you know, proof that the Kaaba cannot be the house of God. Especially this is like a house location chosen by God. Allah, he sent angels from heaven. And he sent the black stone, which is what was white, for a specific location, like just to mark the place, supposedly. This is the mark of the building. And then the Kaaba is covered by poo-poo. If Allah is God and this is his house, can't Allah lift his house up by making and say, hey, Kaaba, go up, the holy ground of Mecca, go up. You will never be flooded. In two seconds, we prove Islam to be false. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, hadith about Muhammad, he uh, speak to the rocks, yeah. Uh, and this rock loves him, actually. She always said to him, Assalamu alaikum. Even, the, even there is a mountain, the mountain agreed him, you know. Yeah. Each time he walk by the mountain, the mountain he, you know, speak about how much he love uh, Muhammad. And the other one, uh, the hadith about the rock, let me find it for you. Uh, obviously, Muhammad is a crazy man, mentally ill, you know. You know, each time he walk by the rock, that rock, specific rock, this rock say to him, Assalamu alaikum, Prophet of Allah. Right? As you see, all those hadith, they are sahih, they are authentic. Mental. There's tons of approves stories proving that Muhammad is mental. You know, everybody knows that people who have a mental illness, you see, when we speak about mental illness, we are not putting people down because it can happen to you, it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. So maybe you are lucky you don't have that, you know, but we are not putting a person down. But this is telling us there is something wrong with this person. I mean, okay, you are a messenger of Allah. Allah send you. Why only Muhammad he hear the rock saying to him, Assalamu alaikum? You tell me. Give me even what the what the what, what the benefit of this. 
and yet the the people they keep saying to Muhammad why you don't have a miracle well this is a miracle this is true Muhammad almost dead and the Arab keeps saying to him according to the Quran why you why yet not a sign one sign so if a rock is speaking to me well, let everybody hear the rock walk by the rock and let the rock say assalamu alaikum Muhammad prophet of Allah that's it you have a stones even talking you know Muhammad he convert the trees into Islam the trees they convert to Islam Muhammad he ordered the trees to come so they can put him in the shade while he's doing poo poo why he was doing it 14 hours I mean you sit in the shade of a tree and okay how long is going to be there doing poo poo because the shade of the tree will not change in two seconds or even 10 minutes or even 15 minutes All those stories we cannot find them in the Quran. Did you ask yourself why? How come in the Quran we find that Jesus made the blind see? He made the the one who cannot walk walk. He can heal the leper. He can uh, uh, resurrect people from death. He can make from the mother bird all the miracles of Jesus in the Quran. But we cannot find the miracles of Muhammad in the Quran. We find them in stories here and there. And then when Muhammad he come with the stories, which not only doesn't make sense, it's stupid, like the story of uh, Musa is chasing. Uh, the thief, which is a rock, you know, who stole his clothing, which is true. When I was in the Middle East once, actually, uh, I remember once, that's why I don't have money. Guys, help me, please. The stone, the stone took my wallet. You know, please, guys, help, please. I was in the, you know, in the desert and uh, I put my clothes on the rock. And then when I turned my back, because I was going to take a, a shower, you know, in the desert, brother. And then I turned my back and I found the stone she uh, carried the stone and uh, she carried the wallet and my clothes and run with them okay and then uh, the reason for that Allah want to prove that I don't have her near look at this the Jews uh, Musa is a is a shy person this is a story of Muhammad not my story read it this is authentic this is authentic any of those stories proven to us that Muhammad is mentally ill so you know, when I was, when the first time I did read this story, I was just a kid. And I was saying to myself, what the heck is that, you know? You know, what? And then the first thing come to my mind, the stone stole the cloth because Allah want to expose the penis of Moses because the Jews accuse his penis to be sick. Wow. So Allah, he made the stone steal the wallet and the clothes of Moses. Moses, this is the plan of Allah. Smart. Moses now, he have to chase the stone. Stone is running. The stone keep going, keep going, keep going until the stone arrived to the middle of the town. Read carefully. So Moses run after it saying, O oh stone, O oh cloth, O oh stone, my cloth. And then the children of Israel, Banu Israel, children of Israel mean, uh, they had the chance to see his penis, brother. And they said, Subhanallah, Musa's penis is so good. And then the stone stopped. Allahu Akbar. So the stone keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running until they arrive to where all the Jews are in the market. And now all the Jews Jack Shalom, Netanyahu, I mean, oh, Shalom Alaikum, oh, Moshe, Moshe, Habibi, your penis is so good, Moshe. Sorry, Moshe, we accuse you that your penis is not right. We thought your penis is going left like broken or something. You put a glue on it, have hernia or, you know, uh, uh, you know, sexual disease or something. Moshe says, look at this, subhanAllah, Moshe, Habibi, your penis is so wonderful. Can I touch it? Can I take a selfie with it, Moshe? But the first thing you notice when I was a kid listening to the story or reading the story, nobody noticed that the stone is running. Nobody between all those people, including Moses, like, okay, a stone took your clothes. Moses, he is not even astonished how the stone is moving. He just is chasing the stone and he's telling the stone, stop, stop, my clothes, stop. It looked like at that time, Stones, they do that. 
you will notice that the story is focusing in the penis of Moses, but nobody asks himself, how come those Jews, nobody, including Moses, nobody asks himself, how in the world the stone is running without legs and how the stone she can carry his clothes? I mean, let us say the stone is round and it's ruining. That means the, the clothes will fail down. How the stone is running? I will go with you. Maybe it can go round. How the, you know, I mean, the story doesn't even fit for a five years old kid. The second day after I did saw this story in the school, I put my hand up. The teacher, he was, you know, wearing a mama. He said, listen, Christian boy, if you don't stop doing harassing me, I will tell the principal. I will ask them to ask your parents to teach you how to behave. I said, sir, I have a question. He said, you are a Christian. You should not be even in my classroom now. This is a religion. Uh, you know, why are you, you? Because this class is for the Muslims, you know. But I said to learn. I said to learn and love. So he said, you should not be here. But in the beginning, they thought, if you let a Christian kid with us, you know, we can convert him, you know. But I'm not the fool. So they thought that would work for their benefit. Like I will learn about Islam and slowly, slowly, you know, one day I say Shahada, you know, here we go, I become Abdul. Yeah. So listen, Christian, you know, and then the student, they said to him, sir, why you cannot answer his question? You know, the kids, they are kids, you know, <laughs> they're taking my side. You can't ask his answer his question. You cannot. Are you serious? You can't answer his question. Answer, answer him, you know. You just told him he's a boy, you know, we are boys, answer us, you know, he would go ask uh, and then the teacher, you know, I asked him, I said, okay, what a question. I said, okay, well, how come nobody noticed that the stone is moving in this story? He said to me first, where do you get this story from? Because in our book, you know, we are kids, we don't have this story. So I have a book with me. I took it from the back and I put it in the front of him. He said, this book is not for your age. Okay. You should not have this book. I'm going to take it. I said, no, this is my, my dad book. I will tell him you took it. So he gave it back to me. He said, don't bring it here again. And don't read from it. He gets so upset. He have his umbrella, you know, those long umbrella. And he start like waving the umbrella in front of me. He said, I swear by Allah, I will use this umbrella with you if you come and bring me any question from this book. The question you can give me is only from the textbooks which are given by the school. <laughs> the textbook in the school is just nothing. There's nothing there. You know, Prophet Muhammad was the most amazing. He married to Khadija. Uh, she was a wonderful woman. He, you know, he's against the idols. The Jews, they hate him. Allah made them pigs and monkeys, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember once I asked the teacher too about the pigs and the monkeys. I uh, said, sir, why he made them pigs and monkeys? He said, they broke the Sabbath. Are you deaf? I said, but Muslims don't keep the Sabbath. He said, we should not keep the Sabbath. This is for the Jews. Allah command the Jews. I said, okay, but Muslim day break Friday. He said to me, we keep Friday. I said, but Muslim break Friday. They work on Friday. He said, this is different. I mean, this is stupidity. How if you break the Sabbath, Allah will make you a big and a monkey. And how Allah gave the Muslim a Friday instead of the Sabbath. And the Muslim, they break the Sabbath and Allah don't make them pigs and monkeys. <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, this is a very stupid... I mean, have you ever heard of such a stupid story? You break the Sabbath, I will make you a pig and a monkey. But somebody here, rape a woman, Allah will not make him a pig and a monkey. And how they break the Sabbath? Because they did fishing in Saturday. Because they were hungry. Allah, he made the fish. The Quran says that. This is not even hadith. You know? Allah, he made the fish come in the top of the water and dance ballet. Only in Saturday. And those Jews, they are living in an island where we do not know. I never heard of a Jew living in an island. Anyway. Uh... <clears throat> 
So the uh, uh, you know those those people they they want to eat they have kids and they don't know what to do so Allah he told them don't break the Sabbath but he like in purpose he make the Sabbath he makes sorry the 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 fish come only and even this is their story even the Muslim they say this is yes this is what happened. If you read carefully, this is one verse speaking about how Allah made them pigs and monkeys. And there's other verse. Here. chapter 7 verse 163 so this is the village where those Jews they live Allah command them not to transgress in the matter of Sabbath i.e. Saturday but when their fish come to them openly on Saturday only only you read the interpretation you will see that Allah in purpose he made the fish that disappear the whole week and he made the fish only come in Saturday and the fish jump in the top of the water and they say, ah, 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 we are here. Those people, they get hungry. They want to feed their kids. That's what they do for a living. So they decide to fish on Saturday. Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys because they fish on Saturday. Do you see how nice the story? And then the Muslim, they say to you, Islam is about science. Right? By the way, if you don't believe me, you can go and read the interpretation, chapter 7, verse 164. Maybe I'm not telling you the truth. Allah, he made the fish only come in Saturday. Only, only. How? And in the same time, Allah, he forbid the Muslim from eating pork. But if you are hungry, Allah is all merciful. Okay, those Jews are hungry. They want to eat on Saturday. They want to fish on Saturday. No, Allah isn't merciful. He will. He, he made them pigs and monkeys. Very stupid religion. Very stupid logic. Very terrible stories. Pigs and monkeys. You know. Pigs and monkeys. He made them for breaking Sabbath. People kill. People lie. People steal. People cheat. People fornicate. People rape kids. People, 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 and then for fishing in Saturday, we made them pigs and monkeys. And then you go and read the interpretation, and then you will find that it's really hilarious. Just to show you, I'm not the one is making, you know, I mean, the meaning up. This is what they believe. This is what they believe. You can read Ibn Kathir. You know? The fish come only to them in Saturday, visibly. Only in Saturday. In the other days, the fish disappear. Who made it this way? Allah. Hmm? And the funny is, look what it says that the fish, their fish, would come to them on the day of their Sabbath, floating, floating at the surface, like, catch me, catch me, visible at the surface of the water. But on the day they don't observe the Sabbath, when they would not concert the Sabbath, that day the fish, it goes. And this was trial from Allah. Do you see? And this is how Allah He proved their wickedness by making them dying from hunger, making the fish floating in the top of the water only in Saturday. We have a Muslim saying, okay, CP worshippers, okay, my friend, black stone kisser. Don't forget to kiss the black stone. The Prophet he says, touching the black stone and the Yemeni corner erases your sin. So your sin is a race already. 
by touch. Did you touch them or not yet? I hope so. Don't be confused between the black stone and your wife private part because both they look the same. So, uh, you know, like answering the question about how to debate Muslims, always is the bent you are talking to who? Every one of them have different way of deception. Like there is there is the there is the kind who will say to you, I don't accept this interpretation. Now you have to deal with him. Or I don't accept the hadith. They think they can save themselves by saying, I don't accept the hadith like Fakira. You know? Uh, oh, I don't follow Ibn Kathir. Oh, uh, Al-Qurtubi. They try everything. You think you have a lot of evidence? And then they, what they will do, they will try to strip you from the evidence one after one. So right away, you will notice, they claim, I don't accept hadith. Why? Because uh, there's many fabricated hadith. Okay, what about the interpretation for the Quran? Oh, I don't accept, you know, they are human. The one who give interpretation, they are human. I'm a human. I can give, well, if you don't accept their interpretation because they are human, then how you accept your interpretation? You are human too. So when you debate a Muhammadan, you have to play his game. They don't debate. An honest Muslim, he will turn immediately into an ex-Muslim. They play games, they don't debate. And as always I say, you cannot debate a liar, but you can get him busted. So you need to use your skills, your knowledge, your intelligence to get them busted, not to debate them. I never debate a Muslim. I get them busted. Debate can happen only between two honest and pe honest people. Honest, you have to be honest. You tell me your belief, I tell you my belief. They don't. They play games, they lie. They do mockery. You know, when Mimi Hijab, he said to David Wood, he said to him, David, he said to him, uh, uh, your God have what depart. And Mimi Hijab, he answered saying, who said so? But he knew all the Muslim believe he does. Even his own gang, they have videos in YouTube saying, yes, Allah have hands. Allah have feet. Even himself, actually, later he made a video saying, yes, Allah have a body. But in the debate, he made a mockery of the Wudud and he made himself, he never heard of it. So those kind of people you have to be ready and to treat them with mockery. You see, Muslims are different from others. When they make a mockery of you, they are testing your water to see how weak you are. If you make a mockery back, they will notice that you are not the one they can play with. They try different, they, they turn into victims. You know, like, oh, you are not talking like a Christian. Is that what Jesus taught you? In, a second ago, he was making mockery of you. But then he noticed that, oh, you are not the guy you can mess up with. So suddenly he said to you, oh, is that what Christ, he told you? Make fun of people? Is that how Christians be, behave? So suddenly he wanted to be Christian. But a minute ago, he was making fun of you for being a Christian. You know what I mean? Satanic. If you follow Jesus, they make fun of you. The second you start making mockery of their cult, they ask you to be Christian. In their mind, they believe that a Christian means submissive person. A person is so easy to control, peaceful. But this is false. We are peaceful with those who love peace. And the peace have stages. We Christians, when time to go to war, we went to war to defend ourselves. When time the war is debate, we debate. When time the war is fighting the devil, we fight the devil. When time the war is to fight our temptation, we fight. This is all is war. It's the stages of war. Every place, every occasion, have a reaction for it. So somebody come into my house to attack me, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm peaceful, but then I will defend. I will make you shish kebab. Not only I will defend.
Don't think because I'm a Christian. Oh, Jesus, he said, if you hit you in your right cheek, give him the other one. Well, Jesus was saying, follow the law. Don't be an evil. Don't fight evil by evil. If I defend myself, I'm not being evil. The Messiah himself, he says, the one who don't have a sword, go on by one. So they have an idea that you are, as a Christian, you are weak because you are peaceful. And they take advantage of that. This is why when they speak to me, they say, oh, this is not how Christians behave. And even some Christians, because they have understood Christianity wrong, they think Christianity is giving hugs and kisses to people. That's absolutely false. All the life of the Messiah in this earth was a struggle with the hypocrite, with the liars, and he called them hypocrite. He called them satans. He called them you know, evildoers. He called them sons of, of serpent. I mean, what more than this? Evil generation. But the false one of us who tried to paint Christianity as a pinky religion, you know, pink? Like, you know, these you know these days, like the liberals, you know? In one hand, the liberals, they say, uh, like Joe, uh, you know, Joe Biden, he claimed to be a Christian. You have a Bible, you go to church. But he support homosexuality, etc., you know? So we don't want to mix ourselves with those who try to make a Christianity pink for they are not Christians. The Messiah even forbid us from taking an oath, either yea, yea, or nay, nay. This is how serious Christianity is. Either you say yea or nay. Why you want to take an oath? Oath is for the liars. They want you to compromise. And they think that the best Christian is the one who compromise. When the fact is, the worst and the false Christian is the one who compromise. The government, they have their own law. I don't compromise. I don't believe in it. I'm not going to go and fight them. I'm not going to make war. But I will not accept it. I will not teach it to my kids. I will not teach it to the Christians. They like it. They don't like it. You don't like it. Take me to jail. Do as you wish. But you cannot force me to believe in your garbage. I'm born free and I will die free. Where I die doesn't matter. How I die doesn't matter. Because death is one. But the man who, or the woman, who die and they lost their freedom. Freedom not necessarily losing it by slavery, like the old style. You know, you are a slave if you compromise. You are a slave if you say what people want you to say, not what you believe. You are a slave if you agree with people, you never agree with them. You and your heart is totally against it. That is a form of slavery. And this is what the liberals are trying to do these days. They try to force on you homosexuality, transgender. You know, they bring uh, people to your kids, teach them how to have sex with men. I mean, very, very, very trying to corrupt your children to the, to the maximum. You don't compromise. The second you compromise, the Messiah will say to you, depart away from me, I do not know you. You will see many, they claim to be priests, but they don't dare even to speak about such a topic because they are corrupt, because they are fraud, because they are doing business. The Bible is our constitution before the government constitution. I follow the Messiah. I don't follow Joe Biden. I don't break the law. But that does not mean I will worship your law. So be careful. Teach your kids what you should teach them. Don't be don't compromise. Don't tell them, oh, we love you, you know, and this like you know, Jesus told us to love everybody. Okay, but tell them what that means. Loving everybody does not mean you be passive and you agree with everybody. You compromise. 
loving everybody by standing, shouting, saying you are wrong when they are wrong. Loving is not about giving hugs and kisses. That is a false Christianity. Loving is you trying your best to save the people from lies, from hypocrisy, from, from danger, from all the garbage in this world. That is love. Love is not kisses and hugs. It's not waving your hand to Jesus. So they try to color Christianity with different color. And by time, your children, they will become really passive and they obey the liberals. And slowly, 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 you will find yourself in Philadelphia where everybody in drugs and everybody is an atheist. Why? Because one day, Christian families, they decide to drop their right. They don't fight back. So the kids go to school, they learn all the garbage, they come home, the mother, the father don't oppose what they learn because they are afraid of the government. Your kid, he grow, your kid became an idiot. And then he will start a family and now the family is officially an idiot family. Being following the teaching of the Lord will protect you from drugs, will protect you even from sexual diseases, will protect you from everything bad. You see, you have a protection in your hand. It's the book of God. It's not the government. How you do bad things, how you end doing drugs, how you end being shot in a nightclub, how you end, how you end, all of this because you are not doing the right thing. If you don't associate with the wrong people, you will not be there. You go wearing short skirt in the, in a, in the size of it is half inch, and then you stay at, at, at the night club until 3 a.m. in the morning. And then a, 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 a rapist, he wait for you outside and then he rape you. Or maybe even he kill you. And then what you would do? You blame who? You've been in the wrong place, wrong time, wearing the wrong clothes. I'm not saying I am blaming you, but you have to blame yourself. The rapist is there, always is there, always there is a rapist. Always there is a rapist somewhere. Always there's a criminal somewhere. But when you give them the opportunity, you become a victim. Do you understand what I'm saying? So like today is what? Today is Saturday. What many people they do, they go get a drunk, night to club. Okay, you know what? It's good to have fun. It's good to have a friend. But there is time. You don't stay late. You don't get a drunk. I don't drink. But the second you get drunk, that means you are giving opportunity to someone to take advantage of you. So why do you want to be stupid? Why do you want to stay late? Do you know what happened at late at night? Who's going to be in the street? Even the good ones will get a drunk. You will end fighting with somebody, shot by somebody. Why you want to do that? If there is a way better than going to night club to be happy, does it really make you happy? You come back home vomiting, sick, you don't feel good the second day, you have headache. I mean, I see in the movies what they what they say about getting drunks, people vomiting. Why? Okay, what? So what? The, what? What is the joy? What is the joy in what you do? So always you have to be vigilant. You have to oppose compromising with everything have to do with you, your family, and your future. The second you start compromising, you are a slave. As simple as that. And if you don't defend yourself and your right, you deserve what will happen to you. Very simple. 
if somebody come to my door and let us say I'm married and then he push the door and he, I want to rape your wife and then I stay watching oh I'm peaceful you know let me call the Dalai Lama you know hey Dalai Lama you know a guy is raping my wife what I should do oh let us sing together to Buddha repeat with me Buddha help me Buddha help. this is not how you do it the rapist, you make him shish kebab. You throw him out of your house as a dog in case he's still alive. A man, a real man, he defend his life, his family, his country. Coward is the one who watch. Coward is the one who don't stand for what is right. Don't be like those hippie sad guru i mean even those like sad guru just try to make him angry and he will eat you alive but when he speak with his people we need to learn how to accept each other why if somebody speak disagree with you you get so angry but the second you disagree with sad guru he will eat you alive he will throw you out of the hole And this is all the case for those gurus. Anyway, I'm going to let you go because I think Sam Shamoon soon he will be live and you feel free to join him. Actually, I will share his link. Uh, oh, it says 67 minutes. I mean, is Sam Shamoon sure from the time? He will be at one thirty a.m. Anyway, this is the link for him if you like to be there. All right. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. Uh, we don't know if we will be here tomorrow. Actually, already uh, it is tomorrow. So, uh, uh, take reference, save what we say, take notes, educate yourself. Knowledge is power, ignorance is weakness. And that goes for everything in life, anything. The more you know, the more you are strong. The less you know, the more somebody will take advantage of you. The more you know, people respect you, will have a place for you to talk. The less you know, people will ask you to shut up because you are you know, you're speaking stupid. Knowledge is a treasure. And those who seek knowledge, they are seeking the best treasure ever. Everything by time can change. Your look, get older, get whatever. But your wisdom is the only thing will make you different in the future. Your knowledge will make you grow in an amazing way by becoming wise, smart, enjoying even thinking, enjoying reading, enjoying learning. You will become a different person. When you are ignorant, you are shallow, you are silly, you are stupid, your joke is different, your music is different, everything you do is different, the way you dress is different. So knowledge can change everything in your life, every aspect of your life. Even the paint in your house will change, trust me. The music you listen to, the food you eat, because you will see the world in a different way. You will see even your family in different images. You will see everything you are born within, differently when you are knowledgeable you will not be racist because you understand then the differences and what make people do bad or good when you are knowledgeable you will not be hateful because then you understand that hate is not for your benefit hate will hurt you justice is what we seek but not hate 
Even when somebody commit a crime against us, we seek justice. We should not seek hate. Hate is something will kill the one who carry it more than the target. You will not enjoy your life. You will not enjoy a minute. So this is why knowledge and wisdom and all of this can be taken together by being attached ourselves to the gospel and not to listen to the fool. Go and open any chapter today. Try to do this. Open any speech the Messiah he said. Maybe you can play an audio. There's, there's many websites they play audio for the gospel. Close your eyes and try to see and try to understand and try to enjoy what Jesus said. And I will tell you how really you can even enjoy it better. Try to imagine yourself between those people who they are there. Like Jesus in the mount. Imagine yourself you are in the mount. Play the audio and imagine. Try to see like what's happening there, the voices, the people, what they are saying, what they are doing when the Messiah is talking and try to take what he say and see how that work in your life. And you know, I find that the most amazing thing about the words of the Messiah, that even though he said those things 2000 years ago, even today we are in the in the time of they want to go to the to Mars. Cars are going in the street by themselves. There is no driver. Things is changing upside down. Still you can find what he said 2,000 years ago is something to you as a person. Yet every one of us have different age, different stage in life, different education, different languages, different color, but you will see the story speaking to you. And that what make the word of God the word of God is not poetry, is not eloquent of language. The success is when the word can speak to you. No matter how old it is, no matter how far away it was. I challenge anyone to go and listen to any speech of the Messiah. And you tell me that you did not find him is speaking about you. This is how we know what is from God, what's not. Not a stupid Quran. We need to sing it to make it sound nice. But the second we start reading the meaning, we get confused. It's so stupid, it's meaningless, in the same time teach us bad ethic. When the Messiah, he said, I am from above, you are from below. He meant what he said. However, we are from below. But if we follow the Messiah, we can be people of above. Because the Messiah, he hired the standard of his followers. He don't want numbers. He don't want just people to believe by name. He want a revolution inside you. You take yourself up. He came down to you to take you up, not to keep you down. And the way to take yourself up to him is by a reading, education, strong faith, not to compromise. And the more you are strict with that, the more you will be close with him. And remember, the one is talking to you is a sinner. I'm not schooling you about how to be good. All of us, we commit sin. But there's a huge difference between someone who is proud about his sin and he made his sin as a lifestyle. The way he want to live, the way he want to die. Garbage in, garbage out. We don't want to be garbage in, garbage out. We want to be changing our life, staying away from the garbage. Enough is enough and time for a change. So I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. If you like to download the video, feel free. If not, I might delete it later. So we can, people can watch the previous video. And until I see you soon, Christ is Lord. And everything is false. If it's not about him. Thank you. Take care.